Hey guys and welcome back to PXH, also known as Pure X Heart. Chris here, back with another album. And guys, make sure you guys hit down that like button onto this video. Um, and obviously, comment down below what you guys thought about this album. And then after the review, comment down below what you guys thought about the review or anything else. Um, that you guys just want to comment and if you guys want me to talk about a different topic then check out the PRXR podcast it's pretty good I enjoy it and my co-host Jesse enjoys it and other po uh, people that ha we have talked to enjoy the podcast so if you enjoy the podcast we appreciate you but if you have not yet listened to the podcast then go ahead and listen to the podcast more on that on a little bit later and also um, if you're new here or a returning visitor, then hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps out this channel. And also, while you're at it, hit that notify bell. Even if you are subscribed, hit that notify bell so you guys can be notified for new videos that pop up. If nothing else, let's get into it. What Are You Waiting For is the fourth studio album from the Australian Brothers. That is also the brothers of Rebecca St. James, um, obviously, as everybody knows. And probably one of, right now, the most successful CCM uh, duo slash artist that is out there. The band for King and Country, yes. So, what are you waiting for? Is the four studio album by For King and Country. For my own experience, for listening to For King and Country, it's actually been really, really cool. Uh, I've actually listened to them like first whenever they are like the pre jam for like winter jam, uh, whenever I was a teenager, uh, for like either the first or second one that I ever been to for a winter jam, and that was right around the time that they were trying to that they're releasing their album Crave. Um, and ever since then, they've kind of took in the stratosphere of, you know, Christian music world. In my opinion, that they've kind of become this generation's um, newsboys or this generation's, I guess, third day in some aspects, or this generation's, maybe if you want to go so far uh, with a DC talk or this generation's uh, delirious and that if you want to go that far um, aspect. And as in what I mean is that they've kind of took in like the Christian music world almost by storm. And it's good because they're actually one of the few CCM artists that I actually really enjoy. And one of the few ones that is actually really, really good that is actually out there. I've always enjoyed them. Um, and so what are you waiting for? Kind of takes the same route as the way that their music has been. Uh, I'm going to talk a lot about kind of their music um, and also some of their lyrics. So within the music aspect of what are you waiting for? It takes obviously the more route of almost burn the ships where it went to that more electronica style and not gonna lie for me listening to for king of country really loving their second album listen to this album was sometimes a hit and a miss uh one of the first songs that is actually a hit is the first song which is called relate and it's basically their lead single for uh this album some people may argue that Together is their lead single. Together is technically also part of the Burn the Ships Deluxe Edition. So it's in a weird spot. That's a miss for me. It's just, I don't like it whenever a lot of bands do that, whenever they put on the Deluxe Edition and then, oh, wait, we want to put on this album too. Okay. Well, that's cool. Just, you guys just could have waited or just had it as a single and then release it. I don't know. It also might have been the way that the whole pandemic was. And you know what? Freaking country isn't the first one to do it and they're not going to be the last one to do that. So that's fun. One of the first songs that I actually really like uh, going back to that is the song Relate. Uh, capital Relate. Okay. All capitalized right there. And looking at it, I can see why that is capitalized because that's almost the quote unquote antithesis of what this album is. It's really weird because I'm just like, okay, well, what are we waiting for? 
um, I guess, to relate to people. Like, what are we waiting for? Why are we waiting to, like, relate or understand people? Um, which is kind of what this album is really going for. It's more of like, <clears throat> it's, it's going to a more um, togetherness as people and, you know, understanding that we all have flaws. The second song that is off of here, Broken Halos, is the antithesis of what we are, and we're just broken people, okay? And you get multiple songs like that, and you also get some thankfulness songs, like Unsung Heroes, which is about uh, Joel and Luke's uh, parents. It's a really, really cool story, and it's a really, really nice song. Um, in my opinion, one of the best songs follows that. Though it's a miss because it's only a minute long and it's for King Country and Sleeping At Last. And I'm a huge fan of Sleeping At Last. I They're really, really good. Um, they're a very, very underrated just band in general. Uh, they sometimes do some Christian stuff, but they sometimes don't do some Christian stuff. It's very weird. They're in like their own little category where it's just like, oh, well, you could be Christian, but you're not really a part of <laughs> of the Christian whole circle. And it's weird, Christian music is just weird. And so you have this album that really the album title doesn't really make sense until you actually find out while you're listening to this album, at least from me, multiple times, that you're just like, oh, well that makes sense. What are we waiting for? Well, we're waiting for that. And then there's a few songs on here that almost sound like filler even though that they're really really good songs like songs like shy it's a good song but for me it just sounds very very fillery also songs like seasons really good song though it sounded almost like a filler and love me like i am also kind of sounded like a filler even though it's very very catchy and it's just like oh okay well i know that song but it still sounded like a filler filler song because it was like well that's catchy but it, it doesn't really have that deep er uh, in there uh whereas other songs do like uh in my opinion right which i still really like that song i'm gonna actually probably add that to like one of my like songs and maybe just like a random playlist because i don't really have a ccm uh playlist other than some classic ccm uh songs just because you know i like the classic stuff um, that early 2000s uh, weirdness that is that really really hard to review this album just because it's not really hard to understand what this album is going for but music wise it's just it doesn't click for me and that's my main issue from this album lyrics wise this is a freaking country album okay you know what you're gonna get lyrics wise all right you're going to get songs that's not really dreary sense, but it's just like, well, we're not all there together, but, you know, we're going to have that still positive environment in there. Essentially, that's uh, kind of what their whole lyrics wise is. And then you also have some of the producers from the Run Wild, uh, Live Free, uh, Love Strong album also uh, on to here. Uh, some of them that are returning and some of them that are somewhat new. Some producers, there's a lot of producers on these albums. As ah. <laughs> It doesn't feel like it's a muddled mess, but it, for me, it all comes down to the music. Okay, okay, if I can't usually get into it musically, and it has a very, very weird synth Christian pop vibe. You know of how a lot of Christian music is trying to go into this like electronic synth vibe? But it doesn't work because they make it really ch cheesy and it's not really good synth music. That's what this album is essentially with a lot of their synth stuff. Um, uh, songs that really stand out in that aspect is songs like uh, Harmony and Unsung Hero and maybe a few others in there. Maybe Benediction also sounds like that. Really the first half is more memorable than the second half because by the second half comes you're just... It goes by very quick, but it also drags on forever. It's it's weird. It's a weird album, okay? Uh, it's not the best for King of Country album, um, but certainly not the worst uh, for King of Country album. 
And so, honestly, that's why you guys should maybe just listen to it on the radio or something like that. I don't really know. It's it's not a bad album, or at least check out some of these songs. It's not a bad album. It's just not necessarily a great album. And music-wise, I can't get into it personally. And that may have, like, detract some of you, like... Just really just, again, trying to think about this album. Really the only song that I really remember that I actually really liked was the song Relate. Um, and obviously Harmony, but that was only a minute long. And that was kind of disappointing. And you're going to get what you're going to get. Uh, but if you enjoy this album, then that's great. I just, it just wasn't my cup of tea, you guys. <laughs> would leave a like onto this video and also comment down below uh what you guys thought about this album that uh we uh usually do on here and also hit that subscribe button and notify bell if you guys are new here uh check out the podcast guys it's really really good pxh awards is also coming really really soon like super soon like Oh my goodness, it's like almost upon us. That's of how soon it is, guys. And it's going to be really good. It's going to be a fun time, guys. Uh, you guys aren't wanna going to miss, want to miss the PXH Awards, guys. But until then, go Jesus and change the culture. Boo. Bye.